Howdy folks, welcome back once again. It's Donnie, your Linux guru coming at you. And in this video, we're going to take a look at managing services with System D. So this is going to be part two of our System D Basics series. Just a couple of things to note is that System CTL, the System CTL utility, has replaced the old daemon management utilities, which used to be different across the different Linux distros. So there was a lot of confusion back in the old SysVinit days when your different distros had all these different utilities, all these different commands that were used to manage the daemons. System CTL commands, however, with System D, are consistent across the various Linux distro families. So now you can go from one distro to another as long as it uses system D and type in the same commands that you would use on any of the other system D type distros. The only real difference would be that sometimes there may be some minor variations in the names of the different services or the different daemons that you'll be managing. Like for example, in the Red Hat world, the name of the Apache web server daemon is HTTPD, where in Ubuntu, in the Ubuntu server world, the name of the Apache web server daemon is going to be Apache 2. But other than that, your system CTL commands are going to be consistent. It's going to be a lot easier now to go from one distro to another if that's what you have to do. With system D, there are no more init scripts. So we'll see in just a few moments that when we go into the Etsy init.d directory, there's not going to be a whole lot there. However, we do have backwards However, we do have backwards compatibility for third-party daemons and services that are not yet system D ready. So, uh, thanks to that backward compatibility, we can still use the, our old commands that we need to in order to manage these old style daemons. Okay, but you probably won't be doing that very often. So, having said that, let's go over to our CentOS 7 virtual machine and we'll take a look at how a lot of this works. Okay, folks, here we are on the CentOS 7 virtual machine, and let's go into the Etsy init.d directory, which is still there. We'll do an ls-l, and you see there's just not a whole lot there. And we look at that readme file, just to see what that says, and basically says, hey, uh, we're not using these init scripts anymore. It's basically, basically the gist of it here, okay? So we'll get out of that and we'll go back to our home directory. And then let's go over here too. And we're going to look here at a, at a chart that compares the old fashioned uh, check config commands with the new system CTL commands. And the check config, of course, that's the red world. You know, I'm, I'm disregarding the Debian world for right now and the Ubuntu world the way they used to be uh, because Red Hat is pretty much where I live, okay? Uh, I really don't do a whole lot with the old Ubuntu and Debian commands and never really have. Uh, but uh, with your Red Hat type operating systems, uh, when you went to enable a daemon, you would do a check config on command with the name of your daemon in between the check config and the on. And, uh, and of course, the same thing would apply if you wanted to disable a daemon. And if you wanted to look at the status of a particular daemon to see if it was enabled or disabled, you would just do like that. And if you wanted to see the list of all of your daemons that you had on the system, and uh, the status of whether they were enabled or disabled, you do like that. But with system CTL, you have a whole different set of commands, right? So you would use all these system CTL commands on your system D machine. And 
to enable a service, you just do systemctl enabled followed by the name of the service. Okay, and it says name dot service, but in reality you can re you, you can just leave that dot service off because it's optional. If you just do system CTL enabled followed by the name of your daemon or the name of your service, then the dot service is understood. Okay, so enable your daemons like that, disable them like that, and of course, even though it doesn't show here, we are going to be using sudo because we really don't want to be logged into the root command prompt unless we have to. To see the status of daemon, just do it like that, and show you the complete status of the daemon. If we want to just see whether or not the daemon is enabled, we we'll just do like this: do systemctl is dash enabled, and then to see the list of daemons that we have on the system, we just do it like that: systemctl list unit files dash dash type service. Okay, so how's all this work then? Well, let's go over here and we'll see. And first off, let's go ahead here and look at the list of daemons that we have. Systemctl list dash unit dash files dash dash type service. So we do it like that. And you see down at the bottom it says lines 1-44. All this, all that's telling you is that there's no need to pipe the output of this command into the less utility if you want to page up and down because it's paged automatically. So I can just go ahead and hit my page down key, my page up key, and we can see the uh, uh, the whole list of all these daemons then. So we don't have to worry about our list of daemons running up off the top of the screen where we can't get them anymore. So, uh, but you see here we have a bunch of, of daemons which are disabled, uh, we have some that are enabled, and we also have some that are static, and the static ones are basically going to be ones that we can't really control ourselves. We have a lot of different dependencies with these daemons. Uh, the operating system is going to require that some of these daemons be basically enabled all the time and uh, we're not going to be able to, to do anything about them. So we're just going to leave those static ones be. We do have a lot of disabled ones, Plymouth ones there for example, that's for a graphical boot up and since this is just a minimal installed server we're not going to have to worry about that and uh, uh, so on and so forth. So we got a whole bunch of them there. Okay. So now, uh, also let's go ahead and and we're going to look at the status of our HTTPD daemon, okay? And we see that it's there, but it's disabled and it's also inactive, so we don't even have it running. So and we can also do like that, and that will just tell us whether it's enabled or disabled. So we get a lot less information there with that dash, uh, or rather with the is enabled option. And yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll try to say, uh, or I'll want to say a dash option, because uh, I'm so used to, to Linux commands having a dash in front of the options, but most of these systemctl commands you see do not have a dash in front of the options. So uh, that's one thing you have to watch out for, and it kind of trips me up sometimes because you know, when I'm trying to type in the, the commands from memory, a lot of times I'll I'll try to type them with a dash or with a pair of dashes, and it doesn't work. So just be aware of that. Uh, to enable. Just do like that, enable HTTPD, and you see what it's doing there when we enable a daemon, it's creating a symbolic link to, uh, to that particular service file. So we can now do our status, 
Well, let's do is enabled first. Yes, it is enabled. And we'll do our status. And yes, it is enabled, but it's still not running. And one thing that's not in that chart is our start commands. Okay, so we just use systemctl to start the daemon as well. And so in this case, we're using the systemctl command to replace the old service command that we used to have. So do that. And should take just a moment. There we go. So let's do our status again. And we see now that it is running. And if we want to see a little more information in there, we'll do a dash L. Okay. And in this case, it doesn't show us much more. But uh, with some of the daemons, uh, especially after they've been running a while, you will get a message when you do the status command. You'll get a message saying, hey, if you want to, to see even more information, do the dash L option. And of course, if we want to stop the daemon, we'll do it like that. And if we need to restart the daemon to read in a new configuration file, for example, then we still have the restart. So it's not a whole lot different from using the old service command, except for the fact that you now have the options and the daemon name reversed. Okay. All right. So there you have it. So that's really pretty much it, uh, you know, for our daemon management, for the basic daemon management. And uh, by the way, if you look in the documentation for the, for the Red Hat 7, you're going to see that they don't really use the word daemon anymore. Okay. I mean, all of us in the Linux world, the Unix world, we're used to daemons. We're used to talking about daemons. But uh, they've, they've kind of uh, started Microsoft now in calling everything services. So why that is, I don't know. But anyway, that is just the basics of using systemctl to manage your services, your daemons, whatever you want to call them. And uh, there's still a little bit more to the daemon management business because we still haven't looked at the configuration files for our services. And we'll do that in a future video. Anyway, I think that is all for now. I thank you for watching. If you like my videos, be sure to subscribe and like them, and we will see you next time.